What's up guys? Welcome to Colorado Archery Elk Camp. I'm going to put up the jumping jack. It's really windy so I don't know if the audio is going to turn out alright. I think it's okay because it's behind my truck but I'm going to throw up a time lapse and show you how to put up the jumping jack with just one person. go so I've got some small details to do you got to kind of build the inside but for the most part that thing is uh, set up ready to go one man job guys super easy heck this clip is only three minutes and 30 seconds so we just made it before last light so if we can we're gonna get camped unpacked and cook some dinner so we'll hang out with you guys tonight and looks like we're gonna have to start the hunt tomorrow dang it got dark on us fast but we got most of camp set up the fundamentals are set up the tent is good by the way i'm hunting with bridget we both have archery elk tags out here there she is probably can't see her because of the lights but let me give you a walk around real quick so kitchen section we have this big old table this is actually part of the jumping jack trailer it's a nice little accessory camp chef rainier two burner stove that's over here the camp chef a little portable carrying case and table a couple yetis we got vegetables meats and everything on ice over here and then this is a camp chef table just kind of another accessory i picked up it's going to be good to have some table top space because you're always cutting up dinner and hopefully we'll be cutting up an elk on there who knows we got a target that bridget brought so we can uh, shoot the bows midday whenever we want make sure we're still sighted in inside of the trailer let me show you this real quick if i can spin this around so inside of the trailer, we got some totes, some gear, Yeti gear box, backpacks, big old sleeping bag. We got the memory foam pillows. I do not uh, truck camp without the memory foam pillow. We have to build some rod heads and cook some dinner. Deer tacos, we got a little bit of chips and salsa. The goal of this camp is to eat good. Bridget brought a lot of good quality meats. I brought some tenderloins from my elk. I shot a couple weeks ago. Bridget is almost done with this taco mix. Masterpiece. Yep, she's killing it. She's got, by the way, how about this light setup on the camp chef? <laughs> Take those in the trailer here shortly, but we got deer meat, Mexican rice, beans with some corn, some tortillas. Camp life is not so bad. <laughs> I think we have a dang good setup. That LED light. It's like one of my favorite things and someone gifted it to me while I was down in Texas. Thank you. This is like literally my new favorite item. We brought the skillet in so it will stay nice and hot. Tortillas are warm. The first thing I'm learning at camp tonight is if you guys are going to do chips and salsa, if you're like me, you need a lot more than just one because we're just one night in and that thing's just about toast. This is what's up right here. Still steaming hot. That's what's nice about bringing the skillet in. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. I know that was blurry, but this is good. This is the bucket shot in the rut, huh? We were together, freezing cold, snowy. So cold. My hands were... Yeah, she about tapped out on that one. My hands, like, I could hardly even use them to shoot the gun. It was that cold, just early in the morning. This, I'm much more of a September hunter than a November hunter, at least. It was fun, though. Well, it's September, and it's calling for below freezing temperatures up here. Yeah, it's not... We're hunting, um, we're camped at about 9,200 feet. We'll be hunting, I don't know, We, you guys, I really don't know where the elk are going to be. Never hunted elk here, don't know what to expect, don't know if there's high pressure. One thing we know, grouse season is going, which is kind of a bummer. We have people shooting shotguns around here. Tomorrow's game plan is just to locate elk. So we're going to enjoy dinner together. You guys have a good night. I'll roll uh, tomorrow into this same video, so we'll see you guys in the morning.
Well guys, 8.15 a.m. Opening day. Um, we're back at camp. <laughs> Pretty pathetic, but like I said, never been out here, don't know what to expect. So we just kind of spent the day glassing, bugling off canyons, trying to get an idea of where some elk are, because I personally would like to either see them or hear them before I just go bombing around in some of these dark timber canyons. We didn't see any, didn't hear any. So I think we're just going to get rested up and we're going to do an afternoon hunt and we actually are going to start bombing down into some of this stuff without knowing if there's elk or not. I'd really like to get eyes on some before we start doing that, but I guess we'll just have to go in the canyons, look for tracks, look for wallows, and try to get a better idea of what's going on. There's a lot of grouse hunters up here, blowing my mind. I, I swear there's more people with a shotgun and hunter orange than there is uh, hunting elk up here, so maybe that's bad, but apparently we picked the uh, camp with all the cows. This is what I rolled up to. We've got the salt lick at our camp. Gotta love that sound. Oh yeah. Breakfast. English muffin sandwiches. Egg sausage and cheese. Here we go, back on the camp chef. You guys are gonna see a lot of camp chef. Remember our videos last year? They were always cooking. <laughs> we're gonna get our backpack set up after this breakfast and go bomb into either A, somewhere not far from our camp, or B, somewhere quite a bit further to the north. I think those are kind of the two zones I like as long as like, as far as like terrain. Mixture of pines, mixture of quakies, some open side hills, so. Man, I don't really know, like maybe some of these elk are just up in the super dark timber, way high, and it's like you can't see anything up there, can't glass, it's just straight pine trees. Here we go. Just bombing down into this deep canyon. Hugging some private land, as you can see. Another good reason to have the Onyx map. Just downloaded the map before we got out here. So it would work. But uh, below us on the private looks perfect. So there's um, a field, there's a pond. You'd think there'd be elk there, but we still haven't seen one. Anyways, we're gonna walk in the timber. Try to get right in on them tonight. It's thick in here. Hopefully they are bugling a little because if not it's going to be almost impossible. This is a sweet little spring down here. Track, tracks. Doesn't look like anything has really torn it up or wallowed in it recently anyways. The water's crystal clear. The edges aren't all beat up like you'd think a bull with big antlers would be. Super cool spot, but um, I'd love to find some wallows and sit them. The problem is there's a ton of water up here, like everywhere has water. So we'll have to find a wallow that looks like it's really getting used a lot, this one. This one does not. Elk sign is looking pretty slim down here. It's getting dark. It's been windy all day. Hopefully this wind blows out in the next couple days. It's kind of been like this yesterday, today. Um, we walked down these pine trees, saw very little sign. Didn't hear a peep. Tons of old elk sign. And uh, we're just trying to narrow it down, guys. Trying to find them first, so. A little bit of a process might take us two or three days, who knows. I keep calling, I keep eating. We finally spotted some elk. They're a long, long ways away. We saw at least like six or seven of them hurrying. Threw down the binos and got spotty scope. Man, we're still dealing with some wind as you can probably hear by now. But uh, I forgot my phone scope, but I'll try to get some images through the scope for you guys. Alright, we've got eyes on them now. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I haven't picked out a bull. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. Yep, there's a bull. That's what we're looking for. Gosh, this one is driving me nuts. What is this thing's going to be for? Look at that. Freaking sweet bull. Nice six by six. Oh, yeah. I'll sit and watch them, see what they do. They're way too far away to make a play on them, but the good thing is, I know how to get over there where they're at. It's just a long ways away, and kind of figured that's how this hunt was going to be. So we'll just post up tonight and and just make it like a scouting mission. That's a pretty bull. Wow, really pretty bull. Well, we got to see our first bull on our first elk. We saw two bulls. All said and done, just want to give you guys a minute to enjoy this. Really hoping that this wind dies down. Like I said, it's killing us as far as listening to elk and hearing bugles. It's just drowning everything out. We heard a couple that were like far away. I don't know if they're hunters or not. Kind of convinced they were hunters where they were coming from. But uh, yeah, that's kind of day one. We're bombing out of here a little early. This bridge is so cold. This wind is crisp. Super excited to spot those elk. 13 total, 11 cows, two bulls. The second bull is a nice five point. And uh, you can shoot a four point or better or anything with a five inch brow tie. <laughs> I've never heard of a law like that. Gonna be kinda hard in the moment. Say you're calling in an elk and it comes in and you have to be able to measure a brow tie. So be careful in Colorado, guys. Here's what's on the menu tonight. Leftovers, got some tortillas as well. So more tacos and I uh, got myself a couple beef brought. So low effort tonight but still quality food i think i was gonna warm this up then we got these uh tortillas that bridget brought and then i'll probably throw some i'll probably throw these things on some bread 